presentation about the uh, use color in one hour, it's like I'm sitting on the model. Therefore, I will stick on my paper, I will read my presentation uh, to be more condensed, to be more, to give you more information, and to not lose my time. international visible solar artists. Since about uh, 2000, uh, he has been slowly entering to the canon of global conceptual art. He has been exhibited, collected, marketed. Today he is represented by two Western galleries, uh, one in Paris, GBHC, one in Vienna, Gallery of Vienna. He can uh, find his works in the gallery and such a long view. Uh, speaking about the color and room from local art historical perspective, I need to say that it's uh, quite collective. It presents uh, color as a UFO now to JK, as an artist question mark, as a conceptual and multimedia artist, and at uh, the same time as a creator of a huge visual archive. It basically ignores other, uh, for us, more familiar and more problematic identities of uh, color as a painter, a landscapist, a cultural and pedagogical worker, a border, a postmodern artist of installation. In my presentation, I would like to offer you a more inclusive uh, image of your scholars over, concentrating maybe more on artworks uh, not so familiar in global art context. It's not, uh, it's not easy to start a presentation on an artist who was so complex and at the same time so full of uh, contradictions. Uh, therefore, I will help myself by using some of Color's own, uh, own self definitions found in his uh, archive. Uh, <coughs> Let's read. Julius Color portraits Siberian of the 20th century, image of the era. Fantasy on a scientific level or database critical level of the relation to natural and social facts. Metaphysics, overcoming of reality, constant searching for something that is behind the visible, tangible illusion of fact. Looking for the essence, truth, meaning, and value. And uh, another text where color is enumerating his most important creative interest. Fascinates. Synthesis, cosmos, activity, materiality, permanent revolution, imagination, life as art, time through, through, provocation, indefiniteness, absoluteness, ignorance, uncertainty, providence in me, sensibility, humanist sensitivity, energy, idealism, totality. From his artistic beginnings, Scholar was a strongly receptive uh, and critical author. Describing his, his uh, forming influences, he speaks about uh, quotation, the global idea of modern art as a process of individual mixing of knowledge from older and modern, European and non-European, high and low, adult and childish, normal and abnormal, known and unknown art. So synthesis as an organizing principle connected with the high criticism vis-a-vis -vis student institutional art. Uh, Kohler graduated at Academy of Fine Arts in Bratislava in 1965 by, by a collection of pictures called The City, eight dark oil paintings in the style called Symbolism, depicted some periphery urban environment with bridges, cover walls, trams, industrial buildings. They express a certain sentiment of the abandon and the melancholy. To describe Kohler's position uh, on Slovak art scene in the liberating 60s, it's important to know that he started a bit late. Starting slowly and not so assertively as other colleagues of his generation, he didn't have time to gain a name or a certain position before the curtain closed again. When in 1972 he was not accepted in the only one professional organization of artists, his professional
professional, this professional life a life like a split up. The same as a majority of citizens of normalized Czechoslovakia after 1970, uh, college started to lead a double life, a private one devoted to conceptual work, uh, to collecting and uh, a global cultural consumption, and the other one, more visible, devoted to conventional art-making work, production. Uh, after the World Revolution in 1989, Kohler quickly took his chance. Together with the uh, younger Veterona, they created a new, uh, with slap slapstick-like artistic couple called uh, New Seriousness, Nova Vajnost, which uh, began to perform and to operate on all possible occasions of reopened or seen. monumental site specific installations, he often used a net, a later net or waves, as his new personal symbols of the cultural neighborization. Uh, white, blue, red, uh, three colors of Soviet national tricolor, uh, could also be found everywhere as an expression of the reborn nationalism so typical for, for Slovak being always strongly consequent in artistic exploration of his signs and symbols, and color develops his traditional or his older motives too. Uh, table tennis, table, for example, is used in different variations, mostly with barriers made from newspapers or divided by a simple wall. As a symbol of dialogical communication, it expresses the persistent impossibility of the game. Color sends a message that despite the liberation of Slovak society after 1989, the fair play or the fair game still didn't start. In 1992, uh, Color had his first solo exhibition in Slovak National Gallery in Bratislava called Sondi Probes uh, with Aaron Rabuschitsky as a curator. Color was then one of the first institutionalized uh, neo avant-garde artist on the reconstructed local art scene. In the 90s, he was really only present. But uh, let's go back to the beginnings of Color's career in the 60s. This is a picture from uh, his exhibition in Southern National These are all the, all the 60s. In his uh, paintings from early 60s, people, especially his mother, uh, on the right, this that uh, women are often caricaturized, <coughs> depicted in, a, in an ironical or hostile way. On the contrary, on the contrary, um, objects, buildings, things are are often humanized, anthropologized, depicted in a familiar, nice, tender way. Other pictorial works from this period are decompositions made from older pictures, cut and recomposed on a new horizontal or widescreen supports. In multiplying a picture fields on the same support, creating a sort of polyacron, color tried to express a simultaneity, expanded uh, field of vision. This tendency is the best visible in his TV pictures, pictures which at the topic is a TV transmission, or simultaneity of one of his favorite sports, football. To one of these pictures, Color even added a cable to they lost uh, to subject the connectivity of sport and culture in a global world. This uh, connectivity will became a lifelong team of US Color, the same as green sports. <coughs> Some of Color's picture boards from the 60s are recomposed from abstract drawings, others called collections, are made from junk material. Color recycles all traces of his pictorial process, all side or byproducts of his painting. The little papers used for mixing colors, decollaged cardboard structures used in new compositions, 
is on the left. Is on palette, some textile material used for cleaning brushes. It is time, at the end of the 60s, scholars apply one concept of junk culture, of padola cultura, gloves. All things are used and reused, nothing is left or thrown away. In post pop art 60s, this artifactualization of uh, junk is a general tendency. The color has its own reasons and uh, its own explanations. Although, coming from a family of a clerk, nevertheless, I have felt to be more of a proletarian. The proletarian, the simple, even the primitive, was closer to me. Those uh, who were doing simple and yet perfect things, like E. Klein, evidently lived in a better background than I. Therefore, the junk culture was naturally closer to me. As a matter of fact, I'm constantly living within the framework of junk culture. And in junk situation, neither great art nor beautiful painting gives rise. Some examples of junk culture. In 1965, uh, Holler started to produce and send his anti happening postcard like text cards of green color hands printed with children printed unit. In his manifesto, he describes anti happening as a system of subjective objectivity, as a subjective, it's going to be better to read this, okay, uh, subjective cultural activity by delimitation and appropriation of selections from space time and uh, psychophysical realities, creating a new cultural reality. Program of, the, of this subjectively objective Civilian culture is a synthesis of art and life, which leads from directed artistic actions, happenings, to new cultural formation of subject, consciousness, way of life, and the environment. Delimitation of, uh, delimitations of anti happenings have different extensions. to some private phenomena. Uh, another time they described some more abstract abilities like social or political atmosphere, like permanent mystification, so, uh, illusionism, shockialism as a description of the, uh, of the political or cultural atmosphere of uh, Slovakia and Czechoslovakia after 68. Since his early days, as already testified by the Nantinabinese, Judith Scholar was an artist really strong in his field. This may be the case of most uh, conceptual artists, uh, but uh, it's not so common in, on the Slovak art scene. Judith Scholar was definitely an artist uh, theoretician. He provided definitions for all his works, partly because he never trusted our theoreticians, and partly because, in the sphere of notions, he was trying to avoid foggies. He liked to be strict and clear, and also to write things down on a piece of paper. That may be one of the reasons why he became so popular at first, especially in the German cultural environment. Another cultural sphere already mentioned that uh, interested color in your sports. The structure of fair play or fair game was in the core of all this cultural cultural and performative activity. Playgrounds, various play fields, areas and platforms have always been color big topic. The green games in particular, such as table tennis and football, represent, uh, represent almost a self-sufficient and strangely, strangely exemplary world of color sport. They can talk about the lifelong fixation, extraordinary inventiveness in artifactualization of the green sports, and incorporation of the green gate into the very nature of color's artistic worldview.
author started to paint with white latex color, describing it as a universal anti-color with metaphysical energy. In this pictorial version of anti metaphysical called Games, he lets this latex anti-color drift or cast to organize itself into naked pictorial support without using brushes or some traditional composition. In the next years, latex became a sort of appropriating color with a strong conceptual quality. Completely resigning to oil painting at the end of the 60s, color started to work, uh, to work with textile materials. His mother, Lily Kolarova, used to work in a fabric shop, and she could pass some unsolved textile and book leftovers to her son. For a young artist and appropriator, you use color in his natural strategy. He simply used his cheap, cheap leftovers, textile pads, stretched it to a wooden frame, using the grid-like raster or design, like dots, mostly dots, as a found or ready-made subject. Sometimes he added some little interventions with white latex color. Like uh, adding a football player to each dot of a dotted textile material, or a white painted figure of a tennis player trying to catch thousands of balls in a kind of impossible absolute game. Another time, he used uh, the transparent material in a simple or sandwich way, depicting the transparency as a home team of the picture. with colors commercial production as well. Since it uh, consists of circa 200 paintings of, uh, of uh, this kind. To understand this curious and uh, self-reflectively self -reflectively kitschy production, we need to know more about socialist arts and condition. During the socialism, the social status of artists was relatively high. There was a sort of deal between the socialist regime, its leaders, and its artist. You will obey, thus to create what you are commissioned, and we will give you what you need. The frame condition of this deal was a global organization. Every graduated professional was automatically accepted in a Slovak Fine Artist Union, the only one monopolized art organization at that time. Most of exhibitions and art commissions were supervised by this union, therefore if you were not in or were or very fused from, your career was slowed down and you were marginalized. But either outside, color was never an outsider. So you were very marginalized. After 1970, as a cultural consequence of the normalization of society after the Prague Spring, some, some of formalist or some of modernist artists were, were thrown out or not accepted. Color until uh, then only a candidate of this union, was one of them. Despite repeatedly trying to be accepted in his organization in following years, he was left outside. But either outside, Kohler was never an outsider, a real underground or DC or dissident artist. Always being a very flexible and mimicry-like person, person, a double agent in a way, he did his best to find his way to the official art structure. Although as a non-union artist, he could not participate in some bigger or some better commissions, he, he sometimes took part in exhibitions uh, with one works or two. He even sold uh, some conventional, some conventional works in civilistic style uh, to state galleries. Uh, 
linked to one festival, so I'm not sure how many of the municipal gallery and that is like from this time. But uh, compared to its most of artists who lived uh, a modest, uh, relatively modest life, the only way or his way how to pay his living was uh, to work with unprofessional artists as a teacher or lecturer and to paint this kitschy landscapes for sale. The art market was monopolized too. Holland marketed his kitchens through the only one existing store called, quite pathologically, the artwork, Yellow. Mm -hmm. Color uh, made his uh, kitchen landscapes by copying postcards and their popular objects, such as Pythagoras, wooden rural architecture of Lipton, uh, or Orama, uh, beautiful legends of Slovakia. Views on Capital City, that is an iconic socialist architecture. The medium of the postcard as a filter and artistic source is in some of Color's landscapes openly visible. As a quintessentially conceptual artist, Color simply made a sort of conceptual, medium reflective picture from landscape postcard. Uh, for many, for many colors' reflections on the topic of the banal realism, uh, it is clear that uh, color knew what he was doing when painting a uh, banal painting. Its probably most sharp formulation is this uh, minimalistic reflection quotation: "My kitschy, artistically poor pictures hold a mirror to the culture in our society. By the whole method of their creation, they are abandoned." As is a bummer, the entire official cultural policy which supports the petty bourgeoisie and fascist political propaganda and culture. They will never be, or not, not even in future, good art because they are very blatantly bad art. It is a resignation to art, also to good art. It is a conscious desertion from illusion that art has a greater significance in human society. Lewis Bowen never had his own studio. At the beginning in the 60s, he could work in school workshops. Later in the 90s, if needed, he used his own kitchen as a provisional workplace. Uh, but during all his life, partly as a determination of his social condition, partly as a result of his artistic temperament and his open concept of culture as a synthesis of art and life, he worked situationally, where he needed and when he needed using the whole undetermined and different sphere of cosmo-humanistic culture. In open air, doing performances in natural environments, in human space, reacting to all sorts of signals and traces of civilization, or simply at home, sitting at the table as a normal researcher or intellectual. In the picture, on the right side, you can see one of his uh, ironic conceptualizations is working on living conditions in the 70s, in the 90s, in the 70s, as usually coded in UFO application. Although not having a studio, the tower block where Lewis and his partner Kadapurya lived had a space balcony. Too. 
It was a progressive documentation of Beery's color as a living stand, taking always one of his uh, kitchen pictures in his hand. At the same time, portraits and photographical documentation were also a sort of ironic reflection about conditions of artists in socialist operation. This lifelong concept of self-documentation deprived, deprived of all censorship was already drafted in the 60s by an anti of the same name, Agat Man, under the name painter. Basically, all his life, he was more devoted himself to pedagogical work with uh, unprofessional artists. Paul took part in comedies, supervised summer workshops of amateurs. He was a curator of their exhibitions, wrote on his circle text for their folders and catalogs. With his open-mindedness, his anti-artistic attitude, his deframing from pressures of the moralistic category of art, was made color an ideal lecturer, as he did as uh, he did not judge and prove the other production of Kichi to art. In the words uh, uh, of his long-term student, he did not deliver definitive judgments, but involved discussion, where also the partner had to think about their opinions. The development of the amateur workshops was the workplace of several of Color's UFO events or cultural situations. Mainly teamworks uh, or cooperations with Lubomir Dubček, also a lecturer of amateurs and conceptual artists. As we can see in the pictures of Peter Fulirova, uh, who documented these workshops, Kolar and Dubček used sometimes their workshops participants as a performing material, but their students also exploited their teachers as objects of studies of various kind. In the picture. Uh, you can see a hyper-realistic portrait, a portrait of lecturer in his color, made by one of his amateur artists. Inspiration was this mutual. One of Beulis uh, Color's most popular works are definitely UFO notes. UFO notes. This uh, project of transformations, uh, of, of transformation of self-portrait into a photocultural situation. See it in more profound and uh, in detail of the definition. Started in uh, 1970 and color worked, in, uh, work, worked on X and his death. As with other colors work, most of the UFO notes are linked either to his personal life, to cultural and uh, artwork condition, conditions or to politics. The two of own notes were only a part of a larger open project called, called Cultural Situations. Those cultural situations, which names uh, were always coded in one of the in one of, in one of other variations of UFO abbreviation, could have different forms. Mostly they are known as a photographs of some actions, interventions, some detrimental activities operating in some social cultural or natural environment. Mm. Cultural situations could also have a form of a text part of a conceptual statement, text or drawing, graphically layouted on a small mailable postcard. As a notion, a situation in cultural situations suggests there, there might have been a certain link to the French situationism international. In B. The uh, US scholars photographically documented cultural situations certainly had their subversive potential. They could be interpreted as a criticism of regime's status quo. The problem is that in their time they were known or published only in a quite small circle of artists. Therefore, their critical response would not be very strong. On the other hand, Yuri Scholar's main ambition was to question, not to criticize. After all, to question. The question mark became a sort of emblem or personal sign of Yuri Scholar, universally helpful, signifying, and significant. Floating color. I have so many questions, so much unsatisfied curiosity, that the very question mark symbolizes the quantity of those questions as a whole. <clears throat> On most of colors text cards, we can see in different constellations some repeated motifs. Besides 
has UFOs and question marks, which gives to all this production its conceptual framing. Other, such as Mobius strips, diabolic triangles, calpinons, page for world networks, cosmological concepts or mysteries like Pangea or Atlantis are presented as well. All these subjects have their contextual signification and their research base or background. So you can see in colors on the mental archive. Mm. As you can see in colors on the mental archive, uh, the Slovak National Gallery inherited in last year's. Color was a big collector and researcher of mysterious cosmological phenomena. In this new book, UFO Fantastic Science, the title he gave to one of the packages of his archive itself, you can see uh, some clear resonances with fantastic theories of Eric Mellenniken with his so called astro archaeology. There is a concept of a letter probably sent to Mellenniken in Color's archive, where he openly expresses his sympathies for him. You can learn with the Zen from Czech and Ian and Edwards as one of the describes as a UFO gallery not for art, but for a communication with extraterrestrial civilizations, as a conceptual gallery for alternate types of understanding. All this astro-archaeological inspiration could be rather ironic. But what is important is that this idea of extraterrestrial civilization or communication was in Homer's work quite persistent, and that this concept of cosmo-humanistic culture had a lot in common with coeval delicacy. If we go deeper in this archive, we could find some other arguments for this line of singing. Colin was fascinated by ellipsoidal or UFO-like things, uh, creators and forms. For example, he was uh, sort of obsessed by the UFO-like tower of the new bridge in Bratislava, built at the beginning of the 70s. It became a sort of icon in his oeuvre, an object of countless variations in all genres of his production, in his kitchen landscapes, in drawings, in collages, in his conceptual works. In Kohler's interpretation, the UFO bridge called officially the Bridge of Slovak National Uprising was a sort of cosmodrome, a spaceport, or a cosmic base of an extraterrestrial monitoring, which affects paradoxically even more strongly by its visibility and evidence. In 
In one of his retrospectives, Sunday Collard uh, describes his view of all operations from the 70s as a progressive material minimization of his artistic expression. This information is a bit controversial. It may be true that after 1970, Color reduced his painting activity on commercial works, that he works more in performance and photography. But at the same time, his collection trace and collecting activity, which is a side of life, which is a side product of his cultural performing, begin to grow dangerous. Driven by his passion for all kinds of information, his collecting and story, he slowly changes from an artist producer to an artist consumer whose occupation is far to be immaterial. Although the subject of colors collecting is information of all possible kinds, from journalists, hoax, up to metaphysics, in that time, information still has its material support, and this support, if multiplied and accumulated, starts to produce a huge material trace in color's household. The whole his life, color was obsessed by the sporting thing. As an anti-art artist, he was naturally aware that in a certain condition, everything could be art. That the, that the context is important. But the question was not, is it art or not? Color was not speaking about art anymore. He was speaking about culture. So the question was, is it culturally significant or not? Posing to himself and to his cultural activity of collecting this question, he slowly became a border. His apartment, when he lived together with his partner, Feta Fulidova, began, began, began to be full of things, full of culturally significant material, which in, which in a certain moment started to consume them. The monumental archive of Jewish color, a substantial part of which was obtained by the Slovak National Gallery a few years ago, contains a very diverse material. It consists of notes and excerpts of different sorts as well as purposes. In handwriting or handwriting, a color used to transcribe any relevant information from the, from the countless eras of this interest into school notebooks. There are traces of lecture or cultural consumption of literally anything, copy books with Czechoslovak or European music chart to result, excerpts from existentialist, structuralist philosophy as well as Marxism, Leninism, extracts from Celtic mythology. Art literature of Western as well as Soviet origin from Denikin and his local forgers. Dozens of boxes of Colors Archive, one of them called Domus, is really special. It contains about 30 notebooks of handwritten notes and drawings from the Italian architectural magazine of the same name. Color was transcribing the magazines one to one, creating a sort of mnemotechnic comic book. Why, why was Color recording things so obsessively? Where this consistent need to process information coming from? Why, as an artist, uh, why, as a, visual, as a visual artist, not a scientist or a researcher, he felt the need to materialize his lecture? First and foremost, certainly due to having lived in an era full of information. There were very few reliable information sources and zero options to multiply or copy them. Therefore, Color's transcription mania was first the activity of the copies who privatized the inaccessible sources by the way of transcribing them. On the other hand, this almost limited note-making was not only secondary products of information consumption, assuming it had gradually become a production, actually a self-production of a certain kind, one of its most existential and most monumental projects as well in terms of time and space. We may talk about the monument of lifelong education, very wide spectral autodidactism, 
make almost a form of a certain info obsession saturated by the exerting therapy. Maybe the most uh, the most private chapter, of course, archive are materials dedicated to Yulia Slava in his life, Petrovia Van, love letters, notes, cards, confessions, collages, erotic drawings, and consent. Although Petra has uh, one separate box in Colors archive. The influence of her person, uh, the influence of her personality on him, on him is only present. Kohler met Poyerova in the summer of uh, 1969, and it was uh, it was a fated relationship for both of them, an event of an extraordinary significance for the present and the future as well. A relationship which overcame all questions. For Kohler, Greta was an Atlantan woman, an idol creator. His egoistic initials, JK, used Kohler, suddenly changed, even if only temporarily, into the team, J plus K, Euro plus Greta, framed in the characteristic view of all others. Kohler's life concepts and his artifactualization of Greta uh, with a fully revised topic, which I devoted a large study. And there is a there is already a book in, on this subject. Maybe for only some small text parts uh, to give you an idea of how their conceptual or um, contraceptual relationship will play. Every story needs a happy ending, therefore I will stop here, finishing my presentation.